where all the <coughs> we, uh, of course my turn was that I should go out and have a wash and all that. In the meantime, the women must have come there and attended to his the washing of his face and all that. And then we came back our usual time at about 8 o'clock again. And then we are by his side. Not all, some of us are there. I still remember Padri is there by, our, by Baba's side. Padri was a homeopath doctor. There was Chagan Master who was an Ayurved doctor. And we are having a chat and all that. So, during those last two weeks, Baba started developing, having these spasms like that. So we had to hold his body so that it may not fly off like that. The Baba would be lifted up like that, you see, from the bed. So we had to be very careful. Dr. Donkin said that, remember, don't press his body too hard under these spasms because his hip joint is weak. It might harm it. So let it have its natural course. But see that you just try to suppress it in a very mild way. So there would be that thing as if he's just lifted bodily, you see, the whole body would lift and then fall. So we are there. So Baba tells Padri, Padri was treating him for these spasms in a homeopathic way. So Baba tells, jokes with him and says, Padri, your medicine has nothing, has, has no effect. See how it is. So Padri says, there is still one last dose has to go. So that will be the dose that will give the effect. So I says, well. So then Padri says, after a half an hour of waiting, he says, Baba, it's time for the last dose now. Says, All right. So he gives him the last dose of homeopathic pills. But Baba, then Padri says, it's best, Baba, now that we should put the shutters down on in this tavern now. Let the tavern sh just close. So Baba says, what are you talking? Well, it has not even opened. How can the shutters be down? It will be opened very soon. The time has come now to open, not shut. How can one fathom your fathomless being? How can we know you we see with gross eyes? A glimpse of your shadow has blinded our seeing. How can your glory ever be realized? Consumed is my mind in your fire and flame. Accept it, O oh Mayhem, in oneness. Consumed Back we go in the blink of time to the story of 1969, all about the trip to Meher Baba's door and the journey from here to our inmost core. Just a heartbeat away, seems like yesterday. Guru Prasad is still there and we don't have gray hair and God is in the air. We start in 68, mid-October. Mayor Baba invited some people over. They were volunteers to help him plan the time and place of his next darshan. That means glimpse of God. And God's glimpse is not for wimps. On 13th of October, 1968, there was a sizable conference over here in this hall. And <clears throat> he had dictated to me a long drawn circular that in the summer months of 1969, he wanted all his lovers from all over the world to congregate at Guru Prasad in turns. Four days, four days, four days for different groups from all over the world, east and west. Westerners were given the morning hours 
during that during the stretch of those three months, April, May, and June. And Easterners were given the afternoon hours from two o'clock onwards or one thirty onwards, something like that. So morning hours were meant for the Westerners. Why again the concern was there? Because the Westerners were are not used to heat, summer heat, and it will be in the month of summer. So that's how he chose the morning hour for the Eastern Westerners. So he made me draw out a long drawn circular, very meticulously planned and chalked out. And in that he had expressed his wish that he wanted to see all his lovers, wanted to be with them. While he was drafting out this circular for dictating to me, I all the time punctuated it with, but Baba, how is it possible? Why do you want to do this? Your health will not permit you to do this. I had already sensed, I was having the sense that his body is not going to last long. Why do you want to have this stress and strain on your body for nothing at all? So he says, why? What is the stress and strain in that? I said, but body, your body will not, will not last like that. He says, what are you talking? He asks other Mandali, do you think that, well, I, my body will not stand this? So he is asking Francis, Francis, what do you think? Suppose if my lovers were to come from all over the world and my health is not good and they see me see, uh, li uh, lying in bed in the hall, Will they feel disappointed? So Francis says, not a bit, Baba. They would love to have a glimpse of you. And suppose, uh, if I am unable to even sit up in bed or anything, will it be all right if I were to lie myself, lay down myself like that and just give them my darshan reclining? Will, that, will, that, will they feel disappointed? No, not a bit, Baba. All that matters is just a glimpse is enough for them. They long for you, for a sight of you, just a sight of you and that is enough. So Baba says, hear this what Francis says. He is telling me. See, hear, hear properly what he is saying. I said, yes, Baba, that's all right, but why this stress and strain on your body? He says, well, what, huh? what is the stress and strain? I lie reclined. Francis, suppose if I were not able to keep my eyes open, suppose if my eyes are shut and I lie reclined, he's acting there on the seat. And will they be disappointed? So of course not, Baba, as long as they see you, it's enough for them. So here, listen, listen what he says. But then I would say, but Baba, all right, you'll give darshan lying and all that. But why? After that, at least there should be something like that. Why not give, see how the people come there with the children and the babies and the garlands that with flowers and the fruits they hold in their hand. The crowd is there. Everything gets, flowers get wilted. Fruits get ripened in their palms. The babies are crying and all they get is just one glimpse of you and they are just thrown out. You told to go, get away, get out, get out, leave room for others. Come on, come on. So why all this? Why not let there be a fixed hour when every day there will be an opportunity for them to come to you whenever it is possible for them to come. Let there be a fixed hour. Let there be no fixed day. Let that be every day for one or two hours. Then we won't have any botheration of providing lodging facilities or boarding facilities. It means all that burden of taking care for their health and well-being and all which you always do. So it won't be there. So why not? Why not let there be a, every day a darshan should be there just for fixed two hours or so. So it will be nice. People will be taking their time coming when it is convenient for them. Be there with you two hours and they go away. This is not now. That will take place after I pass away. After I go every day there will be a darshan every day. They, they don't think about that now. Don't be. Means he he is just now getting upset with me and says now. Just keep quiet and do what I tell you to do. That will come every day after I pass away. From that meeting came a letter. It said Baba's health wasn't getting much better, but he'd give Darshan anyway on his own terms and in his own way. 
he was inclining toward reclining. But hey, Baba, you the man with the da man. All we have to do is hold on. For seven years, he'd been in seclusion. And the rest of the world was in wild confusion. He was raising the universe one step higher. And all that work made him kind of tired. I guess universal work can do that to you. But now at last his work was done. God had Maya on the run. The Kali Yuga, ha, good is gone. The golden age is about to dawn. At last the avatar can relax. And you know how he wanted to relax? By seeing us. <laughs> oh, for Baba followers, 68 meant watch and wait. But 69 was going to be fine. Beloved Altar Meher Baba wishes all his lovers to know that his three years of intense work has shattered his health. In spite of this, he has invited his lovers from all over the world to come to him for his darshan. Baba said, I will give darshan reclining. I can't begin to describe our state of shock a few days later, on the 31st of January, when we learned that our beloved Baba had dropped his body. And I was on his bed at that time. He was reclining on this bed that is kept here in this blue bus. It's, it's a hospital bed with cranking facilities so that the back could automatically be, uh, uh, come up there and make him relax, you see, with little raised back and so forth. So we had allowed him to uh, just sit reclining and he was there and joking with us and all that. All of a sudden, there was just that, a little spasm <laughs> like that. He just put his hand there and that's the end of it all. Thinking that, well, what happened all of a sudden? So I start to give him a little bit of respiration through mouth to mouth, you see. I put my mouth on his mouth and started, and I don't know how long I must have given it. All that I found was myself was on the floor. I must have fallen down unconscious. I see Dr. Ginde, Dr. Donkin had come, and the Dr. Peter, uh, um, Brisbane, from Australian doctor from Booth Hospital had come. Dr. Gaver is there and all are there around. So they are attending to Baba's body and all that. Sort of but they have passed that Baba is no more. The life is, is not there. So that's, that's the end of the whole thing. Over the last days, Baba's body manifested severe spasms and he told us, this is my crucifixion, my time has come. The sun was setting and the moon was rising as we placed his body in the tomb for his lovers to take his darshan. Fulfilling beloved Baba's word that he would give his darshan reclining. I first received word about Baba at half past twelve on Friday night a week ago. It seems a year ago now. And Don called me from London and uh, told me that he had just heard from Baba's brother uh, that Baba had dropped his body. And of course, I was so stunned and he was so uh, overcome, as it were, that 
uh, we didn't say any more. I thought, well, we'll get a hold of him later and get some details when I sort of came to, but of course we never did get them. Rick Chapman called uh, to India, tried several people, and at four o'clock in the morning he phoned me back and said he had just uh, talked with uh, Adi Baba's secretary. Rick asked him if this was true, and he said, yes, it was. So uh, Rick called me, and uh, from then on, except for three hours in the late part of that night, I, I was on the phone for, I think, close to 36 hours, and that's why I didn't come down here to be with you Saturday, because I had to be with all of those people who were phoning in from just every part of the country trying to find out. I don't know how the news ever got around so fast, but it seems to when it is connected uh, with Baba. At any rate, uh, the boys, uh, Chapman and Cohen, and uh, several others, and Gail and Carol Lee went to help, and I and Duncan and some more in my apartment. We were phoning back and forth over to Berkeley and back, trying to get together this paper, which we sent out to everybody, called My Time Has Come. Well, we were all in the San Francisco Bay Area waiting for the darshan to occur in April when we heard that Baba dropped the body. It was very shocking and jarring. And we also thought that since we'd been researching a lot of the statements Baba had recently made, we should put together a mimeograph piece that could be circulated among Baba lovers that suggested he knew what he was doing, that he knew what was coming. Mercia de Deuce encouraged that. And we worked day and night to get that out. Now I'd like to read over a few of the things in that paper, uh, just to point them up a little bit. God always existed. God will always exist. He is never changing, ever the same, and illusion is his eternal gain. Later he said, I am not limited by this form. I use it like a garment to make myself visible to you. And I communicate with you. Don't try to understand me. My depth is unfathomable. Just love me. Baba adds in another paper, it is never too late to obey me. Now I know that Baba has given personal directions to many, but I want all of you to remember that these directions came from God. Now, I won't go into all the details, but Tuesday morning at nine o'clock, Alan Cohen, Rick Chapman, and Anise Hassan went to India to see Baba's body before the tomb was sealed. One morning, it was the morning of February 3rd, I get a call from Blood Dimple saying that Adi had called him, Adi Arani, to inform, keep him informed about my visa status. What visa status? I called Mercia de Deuce. I said, I don't know what this is about. She said, I'll arrange a plane flight. And Rick Chapman wanted to go along, and Mercia really wanted a niece Hassan to go along with his full photographic capability. I've been waiting to hear from them. Probably they will send me a cable because Long distance phone calls seem to be pretty difficult. And uh, the question now is, of course, about the Darshan trip. 
I put off the canceling of the plane until uh, Monday. I have asked the boys to sit down with the Mondelez and get a really definite feeling about uh, what is advisable to do. So I'm waiting for that. I won't tell you the story about how we got there. It was a miracle. But we spent time in the tomb. We were three of the eight Westerners that made it there. On February 7th, Baba's body was interred, covered up. The Mondali were exhausted, but they all collected after lunch for a meeting. A meeting that now focused on the future. Mani was talking a little bit about logistics, and then she said, well, of course, now we have to inform the Baba lovers that the darshan is off, is canceled. <clears throat> she turned to Adi and said, Adi, you cable the Westerners. And she turned to one of the other Mandalay and said, you, you, you inform the Indians. Well, the Mandalay kind of nodded. And I remember looking at Rick and he looked at me, and we had this sheet in front of us. And of course, I, I don't think we started the conversation, but someone did, and had some recollection about one of the things that Baba had said about the upcoming darshan, and how that it would be very quite unusual. Uh, then we jumped in with a couple of our quotes. The one that turned out to be pretty decisive was Baba saying that perhaps he'd give the darshan reclining. Would anybody mind if he were lying down? And the Mandali started to remember all these things too. It snowballed into a discussion of what he had said and it became clear to everyone that he knew well when he was going to drop the body and he knew well that he was going to give the darshan. He had told us, he had told me how foolish it was my being, my asking him that there should be darshan every day. And he has said that after I drop my body, there will be darshan every day. So that came to my mind. And I said, what Baba made me say at that time was just this. I said, well, I don't ask you not to cancel the charter flights or to cancel the charter flights, but it depends upon every individual. If they wish to honor invitation of God to see him, they may do so, they can do so, they should honor it. If they do not wish to honor it, then it's their lookout. It's, their, it's left to them. But it is Baba's wish, Baba, Baba's pleasure was there that you, that you all should be with him at that time. So he has chalked out. He is the one who has invited you. So honor his invitation. Well and good. So after 15 minutes or so, everyone felt confident that that was what Baba wanted. And Mani said to Adi, you cable the Westerners and tell them it's on. Well, we soon cabled Mercer Deuce, who was holding on to a couple hundred thousand dollars of tickets for charter airlines that were go, going to India. There was a lot of indecision in the United States. In the succeeding week, Erich and others filled in the details and then committed that the Mandali would in fact be in Guru Prasad and they would hold it and anybody who wanted to come could come. Luckily for them that they did honor his invitation and those who had come they, they had his darshan to their heart's satisfaction, I should say. We were the very first group to go and you could fill the oceans with the things we didn't know. <laughs> One group went on a charter flight. They flew west in the middle of the night. Others flew east with no excuses, going round the world with the flying deuces. That's Mercia to deuce her family, some of her students, and friends. 
In Buna, we gathered at Guru Prasad. See Dr. Gohair if you're feeling bad. Meet the Mondali. Women and men have new conversations with old, old friends. The soul is familiar, but I can't quite place the body. Which one's Erich? Which one's Adi? At last, we're at Baba's threshold. 200 people. 400 shoes. What have we got to lose? It's nine o'clock. You have kept your appointment with God. The women wanted to show me, so I would request Mashida Dews to come on the mic. Baba told us in 1956 that the Sufis must be truthy with love to God. Remembering the perfect sense of humor about the love. For several years now, our young Sufis have devised goofy programs to commemorate Christmas and Father's birthday, which I had the privilege of, of sharing. He told us often that when two or three were gathered together in his name, there would he be also. So the Sufi's only desire was to lift his burden for even one moment. I hope no one will regard our little skits as a record. They were only aimed at the target of his smile. And as Mary is as the moon to Baba's sun, reflecting his love and beauty everywhere, it is our dearest wish that our joy in him will be reflected as a smile upon her face. He called us Goofy Sufis in 56, and a name like that is bound to stick. Be Goofy Sufis, he proclaimed, and we've worked hard to earn that name. By 69, it was nothing new, because the Sufis were goofy back in 1962. Tell us about it, please, Charmian. One night, all of us thought it might be fun to do a little play for Baba. He often asked for jokes, as I've said. And uh, I don't know, it was something wild that we thought up. For instance, it was going to start off with one of the boys whom Baba had told to become a chiropractor, Khalid, um, de examining Baba to see that he was up to seeing this play. I was going to offer Baba a free medical exam. He was going to be my very first patient. I borrowed a stethoscope and a reflex hammer and stuff like that in one of Dr. Donkin's black bags. Bizarre makeup was added, you know, single eyebrow stuff. <laughs> I approached Baba after Charmian introduced me. Now, right off, I have to say to one and all, Meher Baba was the world's best and friendliest audience. He loved to laugh, and he was very sensitive to my stage nerves. At one point, my critic got going. What am I doing? This is not funny. 
holes were burning into the back of my neck. Baba looked over my right shoulder and quickly shook his finger no. Then he turned to me and reached his hands forward to gently pinch me by my cheeks. And he pursed his lips in a kiss. As I leaned forward to embrace him, I nearly lost my balance. I almost wound up in his lap. Ironic, I thought, if Baba's third serious accident <laughs> in this incarnation. were to happen when a guy he told to be a doctor crushed him. Right? I put my stethoscope all over his print and I told him he had an enlarged heart. I looked in his ear and I told him I saw many disturbed universes and Baba looked at me like you don't know how many. But my whole skit was to say two things. One, in the course of the exam, was to remove a large tongue depressor and say, Baba, I have to examine your throat. Please open your mouth and say, Om. <laughs> and Baba did this. He shook his finger. <laughs> he said, no. First, I will sleep for 500 years, and then I'll say Om. <laughs> Since then, seven years had passed, and the Sufis had a brand new freshman class. We were spaced out dropouts, dropping back in. <laughs> All we really had was love for him. Round the edges, we were pretty rough. Would we have what it takes to be goofy enough? Stay tuned. Mononash Noun Hindi The annihilation or Nash of the mind Manas Verb The process of being Nash Every cycle Every age Every avatar and sage Has one truth One path to show to get to God, you must go. <laughs> All spiritual systems are but variations on one theme, annihilation. Manonash is but a refined way of saying, blow your mind. But not with chemicals, you see. The process happens naturally. And not only to saints in history, but surprise to you and me. <laughs> Ego mind always wants to crow. Work so fast while the heart works slow. Baba says ego must go. So we sing Mananash Calypso. And the tune go. Mind, mind, mind ego mind. I'm, I'm leaving you behind. Bye bye. Release your energy so I can find reality. Ego mind, you're an architect. You select and you reject. You preserve and you protect. Genuflect to the intellect. Every structure you evolve holds a problem to be solved. When the conflict is resolved, then the structure will dissolve. Mind, mind, mind ego mind. I'm leaving you behind. Bye bye. Release your energy. So I can find a reality. Now since the dawning of creation, we have learned self-preservation. But mononash means annihilation. It's God's form of recreation. The walls of self you built so strong. Solidified right and wrong. A nice place to visit, but not for long. 
So let's sing the chorus of the song. It go. Mind, mind, ego, mind. I'm leaving you behind. Bye bye. Release your energy so I can find the reality. Now, ego, mind, you're such a pest. Act like host when you're just a guest. Whatever you think is for the best. Ends us both up in such a mess. Ego mind, you're so cool. You think you really make the rules. <laughs> mind, you don't know you're just a tool. Oh, ego mind, mind, you're such a fool. Mind, mind, mind ego mind. mind. I'm leaving you behind. Bye bye, release your energy so I can find the reality. Intellect, we must repeat, is bound to meet defeat. Remind me of a parakeet all day long. Go. Tweet, tweet, tweet. I say all day long. Go. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Now, mononash means mind destroyed. Your world becomes an empty void. Psychology can't be employed. No ego, no id. We're freed from Freud. Congratulations. Even wise Professor Jung has no archetype for what you've done. Trauma's neurosis, the cupboard's bare. For you, my dear, there's no there, there. Mono Nash, to your surprise, leaves your life disorganized. Ah, but then a deeper layer will rise. And surprise, you're back in a new disguise. A nudist guise? <laughs> mind, 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 ego, mind. I'm leaving you behind. Bye bye. Release your energy so I can find reality. Mind, mind, ego, mind. I'm leaving you behind. Bye bye. Release your energy so I can find reality. One more time. Mind, mind, ego, mind. I'm leaving you behind. Bye bye. Release your energy. So, so I, I can, can find reality. That's all. I had a swing. His name is Breath. Swings through life and it swings past death. Love my swing. My swing loves me. And that's the way that it should be. That's the way that it should be. I swing high, I swing low. I can swing where I want to go. Every day I play this game. Swing my swing to Baba's name. May hair Baba, that's my song. May hair Baba, all day long. May hair Baba, that's my song. May hair Baba, all day His name is mine. Let's me ride and I treat him kind. Love my horse, my horse loves me. And that's the way that it should be. That's the way that it should be. He rides fast, I ride slow. I can ride where I want to go. He won't ride until he's tame. Take my horse to Baba's name. May have Baba, that's my song.
As St. Therese d'Avila said once, Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ's compassion is to look out to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless men now.